right, ladies, it looks like we are live on Facebook. Super exciting. Uh, welcome, everyone. I get the privilege of chatting with our Navasota artists and residents, and they have been having a fabulous time in Brazos County in Navasota. And I'm so thankful to have you guys back. And um, we're just going to talk about a few other uh, a few other residents programs. So our College Station Artist in Residence starts in June, and then our Bryan Artist in Residence applications will open in 2022. And now we're to Miss Lisa. And if just in case nobody has has watched us do our little interviews, just give us a little bit of background about who you are and uh, why you chose the Navasota Artist in Residency program. Sure. Um, my name is Lisa Nelson. I'm from Massachusetts. Uh, I've been practicing art for a long time, and I particularly love doing watercolors. Um, I love doing maps, and I also love um, doing drawings and paintings of local flora and fauna. Um, this seemed like a great opportunity because uh, I wanted to get out of my mindset of being in New England and experience life uh, somewhere else in the nation. And then uh, the chance to live in a historic property was really unique. Um, always love old things. Um, so it's just really cool to be in this old house and this great community that's been very welcoming. And um, it's been a great experience. I love it. Well, let's get to talking about some of the things that you are working on. Great. Uh, so this one I did, uh, I did some drawings of some um, honeybees. Um, the area around here is known as the land of milk and honey. So I want to do something in reference to the bees. Um, and for this one, I did like an abstract of a map to go with the bees. Um, and it's just a lot of fun to do because bees are always so much fun to draw. Um, and I just kind of like the crazy energy of this painting. No kidding. I love that. It's super Thank bright. You. It's very happy, you know, yeah. very, very happy. Um, yeah, there are a ton of bees around Navasota. Well, actually all over the Brazos Valley, we have quite a few uh, bee farms and they're making yes. honey. And I think we even have someone who makes wine with honey, I think. Yes, and um, just some, nearby and we're addicted to them. They're great. Yes, yeah, them. just some great things happen. I mean, honey is just good for you all the way around. So very nice. I, I love that. What about this? And this one, I wanted to do a similar thing, um, but instead I did the katydids. Um, ah. I noticed that there are these great uh, Texas bush katydids that were hanging out uh, on the Horlock House uh, shrubbery. And so I wanted to do this great one where they're kind of getting lost in their background, but also do the whole thing with kind of the abstracted roadways. Um, they're... Um, they're, they're hard to spot because they're so good at hiding out on leaves. Um, so they are really good at camouflaging, but they're just such cool, unique looking creatures. And I love the colors. Those are very pretty greens. Thank you. Thank you. Always mix your own greens. Don't take green just from the, uh, from the, the pan. You want to always mix it. That's the secret to green. Ah, and I love how you did the road. That's very definitely abstract. Thanks. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. They were fun to draw. I, I really liked this one. When I, when I posted it up on the slideshow, I was like, oh gosh, the girl's getting into Texas. I love this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so this is downtown Navasota. Um, I, I've been drawing a lot of, doing a lot of drawings and paintings of Navasota uh, in this one. Uh, and then I wanted to overlay the map of Texas over it and just had a great time um, kind of doing the gradations of the colors. Um, and I just really like, um, it kind of has this kind of tech look to it, but it also has this organic look and I really like it. I like that, very unique. I, I, I didn't realize it was uh, downtown Navasota till you said it. it. Is. And now that you said it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's totally downtown Navasota. Yep. Yeah, you can see the city hall down there, like right yeah. outside of the outline of Texas. And then you can see the main drag of uh, Washington and the train tracks. Yeah, yeah. that is really neat. I bet you all had, you. I bet you had fun doing that one. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But I love all the colors. I mean, because colors are awesome. 
Yeah, I love working with the uh, colored pencils too and when to decide to let them uh, dissolve into water and when to like add them back in so that they stay as like strong lines. I, I like how you kind of blended them in to go into the next one. So it made them. Yeah. Sorry, you're about to say. Oh, those are special water colored pencils. Yeah, right? yeah, they're special pencils that uh, dissolve in water. They're called watercolor, watercolor pencils. Uh, so they're a lot of fun to work with. Like if you want to have a little more line, a little stronger line, and then you can you can always go back in and then reapply them if you you lost too much of it into the water. Yeah, I can tell you used that very, very nicely because I'm glad that you did because I like where you sharpened up some of those edges. Thank you. Oh, very nice. They, they definitely help kind of make watercolors pop some more. And this yeah. one uh, is the beautiful blue bonnet that Texas is famous for. And this one, I just kind of went crazy with the line work. Um, it almost looks neon to me, which I really love. Um, yeah, the blue bonnets are so beautiful and they're just this beautiful, unique kind of in between purple and blue color. Uh, so we just had a lot of fun uh, doing this composition. Very neat. It almost looks like the, the blue bonnet is singing the way those yeah. lines are. <laughs> the I call like that. Blue. Maybe that's what I'll call it, the call of the blue bonnet. Like there you go. There you go. You know, Texas A&M Horticulture uh, Department uh, did, they bred a maroon one. So be on the lookout really? for those. Yeah. They're very, okay. very pretty. Very, well, I, I guess you guys will probably be home before they are all over. I like, think so, we'll the very beginning. Yeah. Because they bloom in March, right? Yeah. 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 This is like the very beginning. Oh man, Navasota has a ton of blue bonnets everywhere. It's super, super gorgeous. And um, wow, very, very nicely done. Thank you. And then this was a combination of the blue bonnet and the bees together, kind of the, um, kind of the way they play off each other. Uh, and the blue bonnets are all, you know, thanks to the bees and the great kinetic energy of the bees. Um, yeah, and again, having a lot of fun with the line work as it dissolves in and out of the, the washes. Wow. I wonder if you could, because um, I know that a lot of like honey and when they're making the wine, whatever's around it kind of influences how it tastes. I yes. wonder if they can tell which which uh, ones are really influenced by blue bonnets, I wonder. I bet they can. I, don't, I bet they can. Mm -hmm. I haven't come across any, so I wonder about that. We'll have to research that. I know yeah. in Arizona, if um, they have special things like orange blossom honey or mesquite honey, and it's based on what they feed the bees, um, and you can't tell a difference in the flavor. So I, I bet that they do have something like that. Yeah, like clover honey, but I've not yeah. heard of blue bonnet honey, so I'll have to ask about that. Yeah. Well, it's probably, it would probably have to be very seasonal since it's, they're only around oh, yeah. for, for a little Definitely. while. Yeah, maybe there's not enough of them around for the bees to to really do their thing. What a neat concept to think about. Yes, it is. <laughs> I grant you. Yes, it is. And would the maroon blue bonnet taste different from the natural blue bonnet? How do you know? I don't know. know. Possibly. You never know. Oh my gosh, here we go, Saskia. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. So just in case. Uh, someone has not watched us, uh, give us a little bit of background about who you are and why you chose the Navasota Artists in Residence program. Sure. My name is Saskia. Um, it looks just like it sounds. Um, I'm from Colorado. Um, when I'm not painting, I'm usually skiing, hiking, biking, running, or rock climbing. Um, I graduated from Colorado State University with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Painting and Drawing, and that is what I do here. Um, and I was really interested in Navasota um, because it was a longer program and um, we got to live in a historic house, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, so a lot of the work that I do focuses on dreams or it kind of uses dreams as a starting point to um, create something new. Um, I, often record my own dreams, although I do like listening to other people's dreams as well and using those as inspiration. I love it. Let's get started on your first one. All right. Maybe. Here we go. There we go. Awesome. So 
Um, a lot of my work is still in progress right now. And so I just wanted to mention that because a lot of these, a lot of the pictures still have, you can see things around it. And I kind of like that because it's, it can kind of show you a little bit of a glimpse into um, the studio that Lisa and I share. Um, and a lot of times in the middle of paintings and drawings and things, things are messy and chaotic and crazy and um, whatnot. But this painting is, I want to say it's almost done. It's probably 90, 98% done, um, which probably means I'm going to change something yeah. drastically <laughs> at the very end. Um, like it always happens. Um, but this was based on a couple of different dreams that I had kind of um, sewn together. Um, and it's kind of turned itself into this weird, um, almost surreal landscape. I really hate the word surreal, but I'll use it here. Um, wait, dreamlike. Uh, dreamlike, dream, dreamlike, yeah, dreamlike. Um, and I was kind of playing around with the colors and the shapes of all these plants and things. And we had talked about this in our, I think our previous um, yes. Zoom meeting, but I was using a lot of plants and things from around Navasota. Um, and I want to bring this one back as well as a couple of others that we'll see just because they've, um, they've progressed a lot and, um, this one's almost finished. So it's great to see your process though. See how it's evolved. Thank you. Yeah. It's, um, it is a lengthier process than some, than a lot of people would use, but I think it really helps bring out some nuanced things in the painting. Um, but, uh, I've been, I've been referring to this one as the man cave. So you can kind of see there's a tent with little chairs and a wolf skin rug. Um, and more than anything, I think I just really wanted to convey the feeling of a dream um, through, through the painting. There's so many great, there's so many great things in it though. I love like the magnolia sea pod and then all the little plants, even the shadows on the plants. It's kind of funny. It's like, it's only when I see it small that I begin to see some of the stuff, some of the patterns <laughs> going on. It's interesting. Thanks. Yeah, this one is, I think it's three by four feet. So it, the size right. can make a difference as well um, in terms of how fast things go. Although I say that and then I'll work on a smaller piece for just as long as I would work on a big piece. So okay. I don't think it really matters, but who knows? And I like how the colors are starting to be bold. Thanks. Yeah. Because yeah, um, Lisa talked about the highlights and the and the shading, but they're getting bold, like they're bold. I wasn't it, I don't know why I wasn't expecting that from the yeah, first, yeah. first go around. The color palette is definitely something that um it, I, it was definitely a challenge for this painting and another one that we'll see in a little bit, but um just trying to figure out the different colors that would work together and which colors to avoid and which colors to really bring out. Um, it was a really tricky process and it took a lot of finessing to get. <laughs> um, and I did do a couple of studies of this one before I actually put it on the canvas. And um, it was, I definitely went wrong in a couple of areas and then I got it right. And I think in this final one, it's really come together in a way that I like, but, um, you know, it can, at some point, you know, if you add too much brown, it's going to become too earthy. If you add too much green, it's too neon. It's, it really kind of, I had to find a really careful balancing point. And that was, I, I don't know if like people who don't make art often really understand how, how tricky that can be to just try and figure that out. Um, when you have, you know, I have probably have 30 different colors available to me to mix and use. And that's, Oh my gosh, I don't even know how much how many yeah, combinations that would make, it. but it's it was very tricky. So I'm I'm actually quite proud of this one for how far it's come and um, yeah, that's awesome. These look fun. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna totally do a 180 now and do something different. Um, I needed something to work on while I was in. Um, while well, it was outside of the studio. So this is um, just something, you know, on, on a pad of paper that I could keep working on. And um, one thing about Texas that is very different from Colorado, yes. <laughs> and I was warned of this before I came, was that there was going to be a lot of bugs. Um, I think Hajira, who had previously worked with the Arts Council, she was, she was also from Colorado, and she was like, Saskia, I just want you to know, like, there's, there's a lot of bugs here. So if that grosses you out, like... <laughs> I just want to warn you. And I was like, okay, no problem. 
Um, and she was right. There's a bunch of bugs here. <laughs> and um, I wanted to kind of bring that in because a lot of, I mean, there's, there's just a lot of bugs. So I started um, taking photos of bugs, trying to find bugs around the house, um, on my walks and things. And um, I'm starting to just lay them all out on this piece of paper. So hopefully by the time that it's done, um, cause this one, this one is not done. It's, it's still in progress, but hopefully by the time that's done, there'll be bugs that go all the way down the page. Um, and these are all bugs that I've found. They're not made up, they're real. Um, I guess ladybugs right now or Asian lady beetles are, they're, um, they're like, their populations are really big. Mm -hmm. um, right now, like in winter, they, they like to come to houses. So um, there's gonna be a lot of ladybugs in this piece, but we've also got um, it's some kind of wasp. I don't know if it's actually a wasp or some different one. There's some unidentified beetle. Um, and then the big one on the left corner is an assassin bug or it's a wheel bug, but it's a part of the assassin bug family. So. Um, that one I found on, it was on our, um, the rug outside the gallery. Oh, it was wow. on the porch, but it was. Um, oh, you're you're was learning big. a bunch about bugs. I, I like I it. am. So this one is kind of, I don't know. I like it because it's not about dreams or anything. It's just about things that have really caught my attention here. Bugs being one of them. I think that it's, um, it's kind of fun to poke into that a little bit and, um, I just saw the idea for the piece and went for it. No, I, I love it. Okay. Yeah, it has a great composition so far, the way you're laying out the bugs so orderly. <laughs> it's very nice. It's like those old collector's straws that you'd open. Ah, up yes. Yeah, yeah totally, them. totally. Yeah, well, and I think this one's been fun too. Like but you're also doing a lot with nature, so it makes sense to have a, a bug piece. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, here's one that you were working on last time. Yep, so this one is pretty much finished, I think. Um, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's pretty much done, so I wanted to include it. Um, it's a charcoal and graphite drawing. I think the last time we had it here, there was no charcoal in it, so um, the charcoal really brings out some of the darks, and it was something I was kind of avoiding um, before because it's uh, I wasn't sure if I, charcoal kind of makes things a little bit more final. Um, and I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do that with this piece. And if I added charcoal to it, I couldn't have taken it away if I didn't like it. So I decided to add charcoal to it and I think it's mostly done. So this one's more of a final piece. Um, it's about 18 by 24 inches. So it's honestly, it was a lot of fun to complete and, um, kind of create the little world that they're in. And I was, um, I was pretty happy with the composition. The fence looks very spooky. Yeah, it's a- uh, The fence, yeah. Oh my gosh. Not that the wolves aren't spooky at all, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's, even if you do convey something like spookiness or fear or something like that, it can still be exciting as an artist to know that- oh. You could have done that, I guess, because um, it can be really tricky to try and convey emotion to other people in your work, if that makes sense. Awesome. And the shadows are great. I love how the shadows fall, like how they fall on the leaves and how they change. Mm -hmm. Just Thank so you. dramatic. Tricky. Lot, yeah, you did <laughs> yeah. it though. You mastered it. It's hard. It's a lot of detail in that. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I like that you do the before the the items the like the the thing you set up before you actually put it on paper that you you draw out the little chickens and you I, I loved I thanks yeah, yeah it's um it can actually like even though it seems like it makes it all complicated and confusing it setting up a little diorama of the whole thing beforehand can actually make it a lot easier to complete the drawing because I, I don't think I could have come up with the shadows in this piece from my own imagination. Um, it's, yeah, a lot of it comes down to the planning that's happened beforehand. And that's why I'm able to do some of those things is because it's, I literally have a photograph that I created of the drawing that I can just look at for reference. Perfect. This one, we right. this one looks very cool. 
Thanks. Oh my gosh. Like I love the blues. Thank you. This one has been um, quite a pain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's when it first started, and I think the last time we had talked about this one in November, it was pretty simple. Um, the composition was really basic. It was just nothing, nothing was quite there. It was very, there were no plants or anything like that. And I kind of had a choice. Do I want to keep it simpler? Do I really want to like push it to its limit. And I was like, you know what, I'll push it. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, um, it's definitely in progress right now. And you can see a lot of that in the middle of the painting where you see the wolves and the, um, a lot of the flora and fauna, they're still kind of being worked out. Um, and I think it's good for people to see it in progress and see it as kind of ugly because it's, this is what, this is what I see when I'm working on them. And I it's think not that, ugly. It's very dramatic. I, I'll be super honest with you all. I think it's very ugly in the middle. But but I think that sometimes like you have to you have to like push it to being really ugly to, and then bring it back to being like resolving it. And I think that it's good for people to see it in progress so that they can see like what what I'm working through rather than like seeing this like pretty final picture. It's like, it's not always like that when you're working on it. It's, it's chaotic and weird. And like, it's, there's a lot of things that I'm still thinking about that I have to resolve in the painting. Um, and like, I know I will resolve it, but it is like, it's chaotic in the middle right now, but I, I think it's good for people to see that. Yeah. Very nicely done. Again, great job on the shadows and the highlights. Thank you. Yeah, it's very, it's very foreboding, but in a really great way. Thank you. That's a good word for that. Yeah, I think one other thing. Is, oh, yes, this yeah. one. Um, so this is a little, this is a little diorama that I've been making for the idea for a new painting. Um, and I wanted to kind of play on the idea of, so I had these like this narrative going from these dreams that I had, um, that I was interested in and it had wolves in them. And then I added the chickens and I started kind of creating this narrative, of, like the wolves chasing the chickens. And then there's this wolf skin rug. And like, I wanted it to be a little bit ambiguous, but also have there be some sort of play in the different like characters. And I'm starting to add to some of these paintings. So I made this little chicken skeleton out of clay um, and I was trying to find ways to play around with it and put it into some sort of composition. Um, and that's what this is. So what you can kind of see is this is a bowl from our kitchen. Um, <laughs> and it was actually really nice because it was like exactly what I needed. Um, but in the middle of the bowl, you can see these little parts of this chicken skeleton that I made put in there. And then I started adding these different plants around it. And these are just different plants from our yard. Um, and I'm sorry to the garden club. I did these um I plucked them <laughs> from the ground but it was for the art it's for art so it's, it's okay. I think they'll but. be excited I think they'll be excited that their their garden in you know helped you in your art and I think they'll, they'll <laughs> I, I can see them hailing it up over it so yeah no I think it's great just don't As do a, the whole garden at one time you know he's here and there <laughs> <laughs> within reason within reason I think they'll be happy yeah, as I was plucking them, I was like, oh, I hope, I hope they're not watching me right now. I hope they <laughs> forgive me. Um, but yeah, so I was trying to kind of bring in some of the motifs of like, maybe like the remnants of this chicken and you can see a chicken skeleton here. And maybe, you know, when the person's looking around the gallery, they can see, you know, the chickens and my other paintings and drawings and then kind of start to make some sort of connection or start to form some sort of narrative in their head of like, well, what happened to the chicken? Like, what's going on here? And then I also wanted to add the plants because um, I think the ragwort, which is that kind of the decorative silver. leafy, yeah, this the silver, silver ragwort, yeah, yeah, and the little fern, you can see those in the other, there's two paintings previous that we had just looked at that have both of those plants in there. Um, and I figured if it was in those paintings, then it would kind of draw this, whatever this becomes into that because it has those, those same um plants throughout each piece so it kind of connects them a little bit but 
Um, for those that don't know how I start my paintings is I'll create a little diorama like the one that you see here. I'll take a photograph of it like the one that you see here and then I'll kind of work from that to create some sort of painting, drawing or whatever. Um, so this is kind of the very beginning of my process. This is where it all starts. Um, and I don't know what this will become yet, but this is the start of something new. Well, we can't wait to see where it goes. Thanks. Right, right. It's fun watching her process. It's very involved. Both of y'all, that y'all had a, a, a great run of it. I love watching and seeing what you guys are doing. And I bet you guys have been having a, a great time out in the community. Y'all have a lot of events out in the community lately. So a bunch. Yeah. Yes, we have. <laughs> Ah, I love it. I love we that. Got to hang out with Santa on Saturday, which was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, we had a, little, a coloring station for the kids, and they um, they made everything from rainbow caterpillars to Santa wish lists to yeah, all sorts of cute stuff. stuff. Yeah. Lots of Christmas trees. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Christmas trees. Christmas trees are awesome. Everyone well, has to sit down and color. <sighs> Coloring is so great on so many levels. I yeah. uh, we did some of that here for the holiday community art day. We did a lot of coloring, and I think we're gonna have we had quite a few adults show up. So I think we're gonna figure out how to do like an adult evening, come and just color because it does a lot for stress relief and just being able to uh, just color and get your creativity going and. There's no telling what all these adults have come up with for Christmas gifts. And uh, it can be stressful just thinking about, okay, who's going to get what? How much do I need to spend? And they were solving the world yesterday or Saturday. Absolutely loved it. So, yeah. So let's get into a few things that are happening here at the Arts Council. So we have our, you can become a member. There's many different options to choose from. One of the ones I want to highlight since we're talking to artists is you can become an art uh, membership and we do prorate those out uh, through October so that way everyone's to do it on the same day so check out our membership online for that and then we have Jason still in our uh, gallery he will be here until the 23rd um, super incredible work and then in our lobby we have a new exhibit maybe if my uh, slideshow will work. There we go. Um, art is for everyone. And this is a collection of pieces from the Purple Turtle um, Art Studio. And then coming up, since January is right around the corner, we will have our Loving That Lone Star flag photos by Ejo Deering. So it will start on January 11th through April 22nd. And we will have a ribbon cutting and uh, reception on January 14th. So be on the lookout for those postcards in your mail it's coming soon. And then I want to wrap it up by saying a huge thank you to all of our cities that make our art and residency programs work. We have one City of Bryan, City of College Station, and of course the City of Navasota. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without those big supporters. And along with the uh, businesses who help find housing. So we have uh, Chris Lawrence with City of Bryan. Then we also have uh, the Twin City Properties and College Station. And uh, of course we have the Horlock House in the city of Navasota. So thank you all very much for all that you do. Uh, Lisa and Saskia, do y'all have anything else y'all wanna add before we wrap it up and we'll see everybody in the new year? Um, as we are buying Christmas gifts this year, we ask to um, remind you guys that there are a bunch of local artists, um, not just us, but a ton of other people out there as well that are selling really cool things this year um, that you wouldn't be able to find at places like Walmart or Amazon. Um, and we ask that you probably consider them first before you go looking um, at bigger companies. Cool right. And even for just your decoration on your tree, like my, I think all of my trees are all artists, except for what I get from Starbucks from my travels. <laughs> or from you know like because I will buy like little keychains if I could if I couldn't find anything like when up north what I really love is there's usually some kind of uh you know woodworker that will cut out like a moose or something like that so those are also so great to to collect on your trees and you know your local artists have tons of 
things like that to put on your trees and to give away as gifts or I even receive some as they would use uh, for name tags. So it's yeah. really kind of cool. Like just talk to an artist. There's no telling how they can make your person feel that extra special love during the holiday season. So thank you both for, for chatting and that up. And y'all have a fantastic day and I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas and we will see you all next year. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much.